So the question is, when and how should you be using drum bus compression within your mixes? Let's discuss. Now, when it comes to drum bus compression, it is such a powerful tool in your mixing toolbox when it comes to dialing in a professional sounding mix and just shaping the sound of your drums overall. But the question is, what type of drum bus compression should you be using? When should you use parallel compression? When should you use normal compression? When should you use no compression at all? Hopefully this video will help clear this information up for you and make your decisions much easier when it comes time to mix your own projects. So I have a very, very, very simple approach when it comes to mixing, and especially when it comes to this topic. I mainly go for one of three different types of drum sounds. The first one is a super airy, natural sounding drum sound that's not overly punchy. It sounds just like a drum set would sound in a room. The second kind of drum sound I go for is a nice punchy drum sound, but not over the top necessarily. And then the third type of drum sound that I go for is a super punchy in your face extra aggressive overall drum sound. And the way I approach drum bus compression is really the main differentiating factor between these three different types of drum sounds. And within today's tutorial, I'm gonna share with you each of my different approaches for achieving each of these three different drum sounds within my productions, sharing real world examples so you can hopefully take something from this tutorial and apply it to your own mixes. So let's start with approach number one. And for me, approach number one is no drum bus compression. Uh, when it comes to no drum bus compression, I'm mainly going for a drum sound that's very open, natural, and just sounds like a drummer playing in an actual room. I do this a lot in less heavy, less aggressive productions, and also in all or most of my live recordings. So right here in my DAW, I have a real world example for you. Uh, I just wrapped up a production with a band called Auburn Gray. Uh, we did a live recording and live video in my studio, multi-tracked the whole nine yards. And in this case, I wanted again, a nice natural sound to the production. It was 100% live, the band played together, and I wanted the drums to sound like a drummer playing in an actual room. Uh, so without any further ado, let's listen to the audio sample and I will break down my approach, which is pretty simple, uh, to my drum bus compression, which again is no drum bus compression. Let's check it out. All right, we are Arpen Gray and this is an original called Every Night. So as you can hear, it's a very natural sounding drum sound. Again, this is a live recording. So we did not go in, record drums, edit drums, then record guitars, then record more guitars, then record bass and vocals. No, this band was playing 100% live in the studio, as you can see in the live video. So very simple here. All of my drums are being bussed to my drum submix minus the cymbals. I like to sometimes keep the cymbals out of the submix in case I do any extreme EQing on my drum submix even though I rarely do that. Um, there is no actual compression. I do have a little bit of an analog console emulator on here that's doing very, very subtle uh, harmonic saturation. And then also a tape saturator, and that's it. I wouldn't really consider this deliberate compression. It's just kind of emulating an analog console and an analog workflow. And then of course I have a little bit of EQ just rolling off all frequencies below 35 Hertz and all frequencies above 12 K. And this is only on the shells. So again, when I want a nice open sound or whenever you want a nice open sound in your production and you want the drums to sound very natural and sat into the mix, try utilizing no drum bus compression. It's an option that a lot of people forget is on the table. And if you like what you heard within this video, you could check out other live videos from this session. I'll leave a link below to Auburn Gray's YouTube channel in this video's description. 
Okay, and option number two is just regular old drum bus compression. Now, I utilize just regular drum bus compression across my drum bus when I want a little bit of glue, but I don't necessarily want to overdo it. I'm not going for a drum sound that's ridiculously punchy or ridiculously in your face. It's just there, but glued together and slightly more punchy than maybe the drum sound that you just heard in the live example. So right here, I have a real world example of a production where I'm using regular drum bus compression across the drums because again, I want the drums to sound natural, but a little more punchy and a little more kind of aggressive and in your face. Let's take a listen. Okay, so fun fact, actually this song was produced entirely in non-studio spaces. Uh, I just used a cheapo drum mic kit, an SM57 on the vocals, and an inexpensive eight channel interface, again recorded in a basement and in an untreated rehearsal space. I actually did a mini series on YouTube a while back on this entire production, and I'll leave a link below to that mini series if you're interested in this video's description. So again, as you can hear, it's still a natural drum sound, but it's a little more punchy and a little more in your face than the last example. And the way I'm achieving this is so simple. I'm just using light drum bus compression strapped across my drum bus. And in this case, I'm not sending my cymbals to the drum bus. I'm just sending the kick, snare, and toms. And I'm going for only a few dB of compression. And let's take a close look at how much gain reduction I'm achieving within my simple drum bus compressor. Just a dB or two, just to kind of shave off the peaks and just kind of glue the drums together in a very subtle way. Now, in this particular mix, I'm also using a tape saturator just to help add additional glue to the drum bus, but in my opinion, this doesn't count as drum bus compression, just like in the last example. It's just here to, again, shave off additional transient uh, that's not audible compression and add some nice harmonic analog style saturation. So, so far we have two examples here. And uh, the final one is when I'm going for super duper punchy drums and I want the drums to sound bigger than life and uh, just sound extra aggressive. And when it comes to these drum sounds, I reach for the most common tool when it comes to heavy music production. And that is parallel drum bus compression. And this is option three. So right here, I have a sample by my good friends in a band called Poeta. I will leave a link below to their music in this video's description if you'd like to check them out. I wanted an extra huge drum sound that was over-exaggerated. And again, I achieved it by utilizing parallel compression. And uh, let's take a listen to this drum sound. Okay, so if you look here, we have a ton of different drum microphones in this session. Uh, all of my shells are being sent to a main drum submix right here, but I also have a secondary send and a secondary submix called Drums Para or Para Drums. And all this is a submix that has some of my kick, snares, and toms being sent to it in a very exaggerated, slammed capacity. Let's look at how much gain reduction is taking place in this compressor versus the compressor that you saw before, which was only a few dB of compression. Let's check it out. So 
as you can see, around 12 dB of gain reduction in this compressor, but we have to remember, if we look in the mix, this is being mixed in parallel with the uncompressed drum sound. So what you have here is a blend between the uncompressed drums, drums that are very similar to the first drum sound that you heard in this video, and it's being mixed with an exaggerated over compressed version of that drum sound right behind it so you get the best of both worlds. And by combining the two, you achieve a drum sound that's super punchy, super in your face, and very aggressive. Now, more often than not, I'm going for this approach, especially when working on heavy music. But again, it depends on the production, it depends on the band, it sometimes depends on what mood I'm in. For example, for live recordings, I'm not a big fan of parallel compression because it makes the drum sound too spiky and it also will get me into issues with bleed because we have to remember, there are gonna be guitars bleeding into the tom mics, there might be vocals, bleeding into the snare drum mic. There might be bass guitar bleeding into the kick drum mic. And if I over compress the drums in a live recording, it's gonna bring up all that bleed that I might not want. And then there are sometimes productions like the last one you heard where I didn't want the drums to sound extremely aggressive. I wanted them to kind of just be there in the mix, almost like a live mix, punchy, yet not too aggressive. Now this production here is very poppy, very in your face, very well arranged and produced. And I wanted the drums to just be extra, extra heavy, and aggressive. So there you have it. Those are my three simple approaches to when it comes to drum bus compression. So my question to you is this, do you utilize drum bus compression? And if you do, which one of these three are you currently using? Leave a comment in the comment section below and I'd love to hear your opinion. Now, when it comes to achieving pro results in your studio, I don't care if you're using an analog console, tape machine, outboard gear, or maybe even a free DAW or an expensive DAW like Reaper and stock plugins. It doesn't matter. What matters most is how well you understand for real basic EQ and compression techniques. And because of this, I'm offering you direct access right now for absolutely free to my crisp and clear heavy mix formula. The crisp and clear heavy mix formula is a straightforward PDF guide that contains all of my starting points for the main instruments within a heavy production when it comes to EQ and compression. Now on top of this, there are clickable links within the free PDF guide to private tutorials where I mix right in front of you. And each of the private tutorials comes with a multi-track download so you can mix along with me and improve your mixing chops. Again, the heavy mix formula is absolutely free and you could have direct access right now by clicking the link below in this video's description. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. But until next time, happy mixing.